with just about one month to go before Tesla's next AI Day event for 2022, we have a few new details that have been released about the Dojo supercomputer that is in development at Tesla. Dojo is a centerpiece of Tesla's progress towards becoming a world leader in real-world artificial intelligence technology. To create an AI, you have to train it, and that training involves massive amounts of computing power that process data to feed the algorithm. And that's typically done with giant cabinets full of GPUs that are not dissimilar from the one that might be in your own computer right now. We've all seen these supercomputer rigs, their entire hallways of processors stacked eight feet high. With Dojo, Tesla is attempting to reinvent the wheel of AI training computers. They are applying one of Elon Musk's favorite thought processes, which is first principles thinking, which means you approach a problem with a fresh mind without taking influence from any existing system and you build a solution from the ground up. So let's talk about how Dojo works and why it is a better solution for artificial intelligence training than anything that has come before. Don't worry, this is a very non-technical kind of deal here. We're just covering the basics that you need to know and leaving out the rest. The biggest takeaway that we have from everything that Tesla has revealed about Dojo is that this is a completely fresh take on a very old piece of hardware, the supercomputer. We've been using supercomputers for decades to handle intense data-driven tasks like weather forecasting and climate modeling, statistical analysis, medical studies, physics, and chemistry experiments. Obviously, the power of the computers was relative to the time period they were constructed. What was considered a supercomputer in the 1980s would probably not even be able to run a smartphone application from today. So it's an industry that is constantly in development, always chasing the dragon of more and more computing power. So we measure supercomputer performance by how many calculations it can make in one second. These are called flops, or floating point operations per second. You might often hear the term teraflop. This is the scale that most of our consumer hardware is running at right now. One teraflop equals one trillion flops, one trillion operations per second. For context, a PlayStation 5 runs at up to 10 teraflops of power. The current most powerful supercomputer in the world for 2022 runs at 1.1 million teraflops, which could also be expressed as 1.1 exaflops, which would equal one quintillion operations per second. So, as soon as Tesla decided to make the move to incorporate artificial intelligence into their business model, they developed the need for a supercomputer. The company had a very specific application in mind. They needed to teach a computer how to drive a car on public roads at a level that was exceptionally safer than any human driver, which is a monumentally complex task. Because while in theory we have standardized rules of the road and standardized road design and infrastructure, in reality, the streets of American cities are a chaotic hellscape that in many cases has been patched together over hundreds of years of development. And this is all populated by the living chaos that is the human being. Going back to first principles thinking, if you have a very unique and specialized problem, then you should develop a very unique and specialized solution for it. That means just grabbing an off-the-shelf supercomputer that is typically used for climate modeling and trying to use that to teach robot cars how to navigate the streets of San Francisco is a less than optimal solution. That's not first principles. It's like the difference between the first Tesla Roadster and the Model S. The original Roadster was essentially a Lotus Elise sports car with all of the gasoline engine components removed and then replaced with batteries and an electric motor. With the Model S, 
Tesla then had the ability to design a fully electric car from the ground up without modifying or compromising. As a result, the Model S became the most successful electric car ever made and launched the EV revolution. But reinventing the supercomputer takes some time to get right. So in the meantime, Tesla has been using GPU-based systems to accomplish their neural net training. Teaching a computer how to drive is not that different from teaching a person. You have to send the AI to driver's ed where it gets real world experience in the car on the road. So every Tesla vehicle records video from the exterior cameras and every time that the car sees something on those cameras that might be useful for the AI's driver training program, the Tesla will upload a few seconds of the video to the main server. These are typically situations that we call edge cases. Like, you know how every town has that one weird intersection that only the locals understand? Or maybe you had one of those rare experiences where an airplane has to crash land on the freeway in front of you. Or maybe you just had a moose run out into the road or had to drive through a weird construction site or had to navigate through a messy winter storm. The self-driving AI needs to learn from all of those experiences so that it can handle any scenario that the real world might throw at it. And only then can we trust this software to take over full control of the vehicle with no human oversight. And that requires a lot of video processing. Each second of video that gets uploaded is going to have 30 individual frames at 1280 by 980 pixels multiplied by eight cameras and there are something like 2 million Tesla vehicles on the road today. Tesla is pretty unique in the way that they train their AI with video. And that means they require much more computing power than your average AI company that might just use spreadsheet data or single images to train their algorithm. Currently, Tesla is using one of the most powerful GPU-based supercomputers in the world to handle this task. Tim Zaman, the engineering manager leading the AI infrastructure and AI platform at Tesla, recently shared that the company has upgraded their GPU cluster to a total of 7,360 NVIDIA A100 GPUs, making it the seventh highest GPU count in the world. The problem is that the Tesla AI team doesn't find this solution to be scalable to the size that they need, in order to bring autopilot to the point where it actually becomes full self-driving. Sure, they can just keep adding more and more GPUs, but it's a diminishing returns kind of deal because in turn, they're just adding more cost and more power consumption. And at a point, each GPU starts costing more than it contributes. By the way, if you're enjoying the content we create here on the Tesla space and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page. We've got some exclusive perks for our Patreon supporters, and it helps us grow the team and continue producing this content. So obviously, this is a solution that Tesla has been working on for a very long time. And it's just now coming to the point where they are seeing the results. The company started by gathering talent from their greater tech community. Emil Talpez, who recently gave a feature presentation on Dojo to the Hot Chips conference, arrived at Tesla after 17 years with AMD, developing the Opteron processors. The current autopilot hardware architect at Tesla also came from AMD with over 15 years of experience. Bill Chang, the principal system engineer at Tesla, spent a decade and a half at IBM before moving to Apple and working on the company's transition to Apple Silicon M1 chips. Tesla was able to poach these guys and others away from their roles at very successful legacy tech companies by promising them the opportunity to design a custom AI supercomputer from scratch. And that's exactly what they did. So, there are three main points that Dojo is focused on to achieve maximum performance. Those are scalability, efficiency, and bandwidth. A typical supercomputer system is built on a hierarchy of boxes. 
So you start with the CPU, which gets put into a die, which gets put into a module, which gets put into a board, which gets put into a rack, which gets put into a cabinet. And then those are interconnected to form a system. Every time you make one of those steps, you lose signal, resulting in lower bandwidth and higher latency. Dojo starts with the D1 chip, which is actually a full-fledged computer in itself with a CPU, dedicated memory, and input-output interfaces all on a single die. It's basically the same idea as Apple's new M1-powered computers. Everything is integrated onto one single piece of silicon instead of having separate chips that are all connected together with wires. You know how your average PC tower is going to have the CPU, the GPU, and the RAM all in different locations around the box. Imagine all of those components shrunk down and integrated into a single chip that fits in the palm of your hand much smaller than the A100 GPU and with significantly lower power requirements. Where things get crazy is when those D1 chips are integrated to form a tile. So this is a two-dimensional mesh of 25 seamlessly interconnected chips in a 5x5 array. 25 individual computers all operating on a single tile of silicon. The in-tile bandwidth between each chip has been revealed to be 9 terabytes per second with just 100 nanoseconds of latency between each chip. One nanosecond is one billionth of a second, just for scale. Each tile uses 15 kilowatts of power and has an integrated electrical, thermal, and mechanical system. So each tile is individually powered and cooled all on its own. So we're at 25 individual computers talking to each other at nine terabytes per second and operating off one single power source and cooling system. And then Dojo scales up by interconnecting the tiles again on a two dimensional plane. So we are keeping the distance between two components as small as possible by creating one big flat panel of tiles. In a traditional supercomputer, these tiles would be stacked on top of each other three-dimensionally with a bunch of optical cables running between each layer. So each tile connects to another tile on at least two sides, if not three sides interconnected. This allows Dojo to reach four and a half terabytes per second of bandwidth transfer through each tile edge. And it looks like right now they are connecting six tiles at once into a single system that requires no additional power or cooling because each tile is self-sufficient. So that's now up to 150 individual computers working seamlessly interconnected in one integrated system. And then they just keep linking these systems together on and on until you achieve the required computing power. Because each tile is self-sufficient for both power and cooling, they can scale up pretty much infinitely. Right now, Tesla is targeting Dojo to reach the exascale, which would require 120 tiles in total or 3000 D1 chips functioning as an integrated network. Remember back to Tesla's existing GPU-based computer that uses 7,360 A100 chips, Dojo would be achieving something like double the computing power using less than half of the number of chips with a significantly lower energy draw in a significantly smaller footprint. And that's the scalability of Dojo. That's what Tesla is aiming for with the project. Something that can not only exceed the existing capability, but will allow them to double it, and then double that again, and then double that again, all within a sustainable architecture. So obviously this is something that we are going to be hearing a lot more about at Tesla's second AI day on September 30th, but this is essentially all you need to know going into that event. And then we are going to find out exactly what level of performance Dojo has achieved already and get some projections of where it can go from here. Hopefully that makes sense 
If you know more about supercomputers and processors, please keep the conversation going in the comment section below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.